video, we shall look at a few past year questions involving integrals of rational functions, particularly where partial fractions can be used to simplify the expressions. Here are a few typical rational functions that can be split into their partial fractions. Notice that the denominators have been factorized. Let's work on the first fraction. To get its partial fractions, we only need to consider the denominator factors. They are the linear factors x, x plus 1, and x minus 1. So the partial fractions have denominators taken by the factors x, x plus 1, and x minus 1. The numerators have constants which we label a, b, and c. Now let's consider the next expression. In this fraction, the denominator is x squared, x minus 1. So again, we should have partial fractions with denominators x squared and x minus 1. However, because x squared is a repeated factor, we need to include all the factors with the lower degree. So we include x power 1. And then we apply the constants to the numerators which we label as a, b, and c. In the last expression, we have factors t squared plus 4 and t minus 1. So our partial fractions contain the denominators t squared plus 4 and t minus 1. The numerators is one degree less than the denominators. So in this case, we need t, so we apply a constant in front of it, plus b and c for the denominator t minus 1. We shall look at some past year problems involving partial fractions. In this problem, part A asks us to find the partial fractions of the fraction by finding the unknowns a, b, and c. Part B asks us to evaluate the integral, which on closer look, is the same fraction as part A. There are several ways to find A, B, and C. We can use substitution, compare coefficients, or cover-up rule. Let's start with substitution. First, we multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator x times x plus 1 times x minus 1. This gives Second, we create three equations by substituting x values to find the unknowns a, b, and c. By setting each factor to zero, The equations are Hence we get the values of A, B and C. Another way to solve A, B, C is to use the cover-up rule. To use the cover-up rule, we first observe this fraction and A. To find A, we cover up the term that appears below A in the larger fraction. So A equals 2x squared plus 1 over x plus 1, x minus 1. Since we covered x, we set x to 0. Substituting we get to find b, again we look at the whole fraction and the fraction with b. We cover up 
x plus 1 occurring below b in the larger fraction. So b equals 2x squared plus 1 over x times x minus 1. Since we covered up x plus 1, that set to 0 is x equals to negative 1. Substituting this value, we get 3 over 2 as before. Finally, to find c, we cover up the, the factor below c, which is x minus 1, the larger fraction. So c equals to 2x squared plus 1 over x times x plus 1, and we set x minus 1, the factor we covered up, to 0, which gives x equals to 1. Substituting x equals to 1, again we get 3 over 2 as before. So this is cover-up rule. Next, we find part b. Factoring the denominator, we find that this is, which is exactly the fraction in part A. Since we have found the unknowns A, B, C, of, let's write it in. So we have A over X and B over X plus 1, or 3 over 2 over X plus 1, plus C over X minus 1, or 3 over 2 over X minus 1. To integrate, let's review some common integrals. 1 over x integrated gives ln x plus c. The integral of 1 over x plus a dx for a any constant is equal to ln absolute value of x plus a plus c. This can be found by using substitution where u equals x plus a. So we get negative ln x plus 3 over 2 ln x plus 1 plus 3 over 2 ln x minus 1 plus c. In this example, we are asked to find the missing components in the partial fractions, namely a and b and then evaluate the related integral in part B. Part A. Recall that we have three techniques to find the unknowns. We have seen how the first and the third method work. Let's use compare coefficients method for this problem. First, we multiply both sides by the common denominator x squared times x minus 1. We get this. Let's expand the right hand side. Next, we collect x squared terms, x terms and the constant terms. Now, comparing the coefficients of x squared on both sides, the x squared term on the left-hand side has zero coefficients. On the right side, this is negative 5 plus b. Therefore, we have b equals to 5. Next, we can either equate the coefficient of x on both sides or the constant term. It seems easier to compare the constant term. On the left hand side, this is 4. On the right hand side, this is minus a. This gives a equals to negative 4. So we have our a and b values. As an exercise for yourself, try using the substitution of values method or the cover up rule to find a and b again. Part b. We're asked to evaluate this integral. From part A, we have, which is the partial fraction decomposition, 
of the original fraction in part A. Now part B can be separated into two fractions. In the first fraction, notice that we can cancel x squared so that the first fraction becomes 2 over x minus 1. The second part is actually from the original fraction in part A, whose partial fraction is given above. Notice that these are similar terms. Let's combine them. Finally, using the common integrals we have in 1, 2, and 3, you can evaluate the integral. This gives 7 ln x minus 1 minus 5 ln x plus 4 over x plus c. This is the last question we'll look at. Part A, we find the unknown constants A, B, and C. Part B, evaluate the integral. Part A, for this question, let's use the substitution of values to find A, B, and C. You may choose to use other methods as described earlier. Multiplying both sides by the common denominator, t squared plus 4 times t minus 1, we get... Remember to write appropriate brackets when necessary. Since we have three unknowns, we need three equations, and we create this by substituting three different t values. A good choice is to set the factors to zero. When we set t minus 1 to 0, we get t equals to 1. Substituting this into the equation, we get... So a is equal to 2. Next, if we consider setting t squared plus 4 to 0, we will get complex answers. So it's probably easier to use easy number 0, we get, and since we already know the value of a, we can replace it by 2. Solving this, we get c equals to 8. For last value of t, you can choose another simple number, for example, negative 1 or 2. Make sure you don't repeat your t values, because you will not get a different equation. So supposing we choose 2, this gives... Notice that we replace the values of a and c. Solving this, we get the value of b. These are the values of a, b, and c. Now let's do the integral in part b. From part a, we have... In this integral, we observe that it is in fact one-fifth of the integral above. So the partial fractions become the first integral uses this formula integrating 1 over x plus a dx we get ln x plus a therefore the integral of 1 over t minus 1 is ln t minus 1 we put the coefficient in front for the second integral we notice that if I insert 2 in the numerator and divide 2 outside, then this fraction satisfies f prime x of fx, which is log of the denominator according to our formula. So the second integral is 3 over 10 log t squared plus 4. Finally, the third integral formula is given by the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared dx is equal to 
1 over a tangent inverse x over a plus c. In this case, a is 2. So we have 1 over a, which is 1 over 2, tangent inverse over 2. Simplifying, we get, which is the integral we need.